the topic is gingivectomy and gingivoplasty now when you have a suffix astomy so that means it is the removal of that particular part so gingivectomy is removal of the gingiva and gingivoplasty plasty is recontouring or re reshaping the particular structure so the gingivoplasty that is reshaping the gingiva now the definition for gingivectomy is gingivectomy it is an excision of the soft tissue wall of the periodontal pocket so you are just excising the periodontal pocket wall so this is your periodontal pocket so over in the normal scenario you will see your attachment your gingiva is over the tooth so it is covering the cj but now when you will see the pocket so in that case also the gingiva it is covering the cj but you will see this attachment loss and that is nothing but your pocket so when you are seeing this gingivectomy so when you are doing the gingivectomy you are removing the soft tissue wall of this periodontal pocket so it is excision of the gingiva by removing the diseased pocket wall thereby exposing the tooth surface so what you are doing so now this is the pocket which is present so you are removing this gingival wall and you are exposing the tooth surface which provides the visibility and accessibility now if you have this calculus which is present beneath this gingiva so you cannot see this properly so because of that for that the visibility and the accessibility is attained by this gingivectomy that are essential for the complete removal of the irritating surface deposit and thorough smoothing of the roots so now when you are removing this gingiva and after that you can see this area properly so you can see this tooth surface properly and this helps in removing this calculus or plaque which is present and you are like thorough you are smoothing the roots thoroughly so this is nothing but the gingivectomy where you are excising the gingiva so this is how it looks so this is the pocket which is present so you are excising this gingiva and after this you you can see like after the incision it looks like this you have completely excised this portion and after healing it gets this attachment retained this is the normal scenario it is used gingivectomy is used in gingival enlargement so gingival enlargement is nothing but the pseudo pocket in which the gingiva it is above the tooth surface and in this there is this supra bony pocket and there is this intra bony pocket but now in gingivectomy you cannot so gingivectomy is usually is not done it is contraindicated when you have intra bony pocket because now in intra bony pocket you can see the pockets they are at very depth and if you are removing such huge wall of gingiva which is not applicable so in that case you are not doing gingivectomy in cases of intra bony pockets in that you are doing the plaque surgeries only now what are the rational and the prerequisites of the gingivectomy so the rational is to improve the visibility and the accessibility for the complete calculus removal and thorough smoothing of the root this is the rational why you are doing this gingivectomy so that you can get that visibility and accessibility to remove the calculus from the roots to create a favorable environment for the gingival healing so this is the normal contour of the gingiva so you are creating that favorable environment for the gingival healing through the gingivectomy then to restore the physiological gingival contour so this is a gingival contour but now this has like because of pockets it has got hampered so to restore that physiological gingival contour you are doing gingivectomy now what are the prerequisites so there should be no intra bony pockets or intra bony defects now as i said intra bony pockets it is contraindicated if there are intra bony pockets which are present so it is contraindicated gingivectomy is contraindicated in such case there should be adequate zone of attached gingiva now this is your attached gingiva so it should be adequate it should not be like your attached gingiva is inadequate so this is a prerequisite before doing the gingivectomy then the underlying bone it must be normal or nearly normal and if there is bone loss it should be horizontal in nature if you see there is vertical or angular bone loss so it means there is infra bony pocket so in that case you cannot do gingivectomy so if there is bone loss or so bone loss ideally it should not having the bone loss and if there is bone loss then it should be horizontal in nature now what are the indications so if all the prerequisites are met it may be used to do the following so we have seen all the prerequisites so if all the prerequisites are met then you can do gingivectomy in all these conditions for the pocket elimination to eliminate the supra bony pocket and the pseudo pocket pseudo pocket is nothing but when you have gingival enlargement so you are doing gingivectomy in supra bony pocket and pseudo pockets then for the gingival correction it can be to correct the gingival craters in anag or in flap procedures to correct the gingival craters you can do gingivectomy 
then to remove the fibrous or edematous enlargement so if there are enlargements which are present you can do the gevectomies then to transform the rolled or blunted marginal to a physiologic form now if your gingival margin they are blunted or they are rolled so to correct them to get them in the physiologic form you are doing the gevectomy then to create a bilateral symmetry where gingival margin of the one incisor it has receded somewhat more than the adjacent incisor so in that case you can do gingivectomy now in the case of crown lengthening to create a more aesthetic form so this is a case when the crown length is less so to like enlarge or to lengthen this crown you are doing gingivectomy so now you can see this was the gingiva which was present onto the crown so you are removing this gingival part and then you can see this is the crown lengthening procedure and then in the case of supra bony abscesses you can do gingivectomy now contraindications are they are patient related and the pathological condition patient related are the if the patient is uncooperative if there are any medical compromised patient then inadequate attached gingival width as we have seen it is a prerequisite of gingivectomy that you should have attached gingiva adequately then inadequate oral hygiene it is maintained by the patient so in all this condition it is contraindicated then pathological is when there are infra bony pockets so in that case you are not doing the gingivectomy in that case you have to do the flap surgeries or any other surgery resective or regenerative surgeries then there is fragile gingiva in that it is contraindicated if the bone defect it cannot be corrected and if the location of the base of the pocket it is apical to the mucogingival junction so this is your mucogingival junction so if the pocket base is apical to this so it means it is a infra bony pocket so in that case you cannot do gingivectomy now what are the advantages so it is simple and quick it is a pocket elimination procedure disadvantages is there is loss of keratinized tissue now as you are removing a whole chunk of gingiva from the above portion like wherever you are removing it so you are removing the keratinized tissue also then there can be bleeding post operatively the healing is by secondary intention then inability to treat undergoing underlying osseous deformative if there are any osseous deformative underlying osseous deformative you cannot treat that with gingivectomy then there can be recession if now you can now you can see in this gingivectomy you know you are removing a whole chunk of gingiva and because of that the root it is exposed so there is this recession or it is said as it is a recession where you can see the root so the recession in maxillary anti, uh, anterior it will result in the aesthetic problem now you are removing the whole chunk of gingiva and because of that now you can see the root and because of that it can lead to aesthetic problems then recession and the root exposure it leads to dentinal hypersensitivity now you are removing the gingiva because of that the root it is exposed and it can lead to dentinal hypersensitivity now there are four types of gingivectomy that is surgical more commonly used one laser then gingivectomy by electrosurgery which is by using electrodes and gingivectomy by using some chemical that is the gingivectomy by the chemo surgery so now starting with the first one that is the surgical gingivectomy now what are the instruments which are used in surgical so there are this pocket markers which are commonly used ones are the goldman fox and the crane kaplan then there is this crickland knife which is the knife of gingivectomy this is known as knife of gingivectomy so now in your spot as you can get this crickland so they'll keep this crickland's knife and they'll ask everything about it so this has so this is a paired instrument which you have in like right and left so this is a crickland's knife then you have orban's knife so this is a orban's knife then the bp blade that is bart parker plate and in that you have the handle so the blades that are used in surgical gingivectomy are 11 12 and 15 so this is the 11 number 12 number and 15 number bp blade is used with the bp handle then there are this tissue nippers so this is a tissue nippers which is used to remove which is used to excise the gingiva which is incised then your supra and sub gingival scalers and curates to remove the calculus from the root surfaces so this is the instruments that are used in surgical gingivectomy now starting with the procedure so those following steps are for the surgical gingivectomy first you are anesthetizing the area then you are marking the pockets like where exactly the pockets are then you are resecting the gingiva you are removing all the granulation tissue and the calculus and then you are placing the periodontal pack so this is the step in the surgical gingivectomy so now in this the pocket so first is this pocket marking so you are marking the pocket so this is how it looks so you are marking the pocket so we have seen the instrument which are used are those pocket markers so those are the goldman fox and the crane kaplans so these are the instruments that are used for the pocket marking so pocket on each surface are there they are explored with the periodontal probe which is parallel to the root surface 
So you are first exploring the pockets where all the pockets are present with the periodontal with the periodontal probe, and then this base of the pocket they are marked with this periodontal marker at three planes on the each tooth on the each labial lingual surfaces. So you are marking all this pockets depth. So you are marking the base like where exactly they are present with this pocket markers on the surfaces on all surfaces that is labial and lingual. Then the pocket it should be marked systematically beginning on the distal surface of the last tooth. So first you are marking this pocket from the last tooth and that also the distal surface of it and then you are moving to the facial surface and then you are coming anteriorly to the midline. So this is how you mark the pockets. Then the next is the incision which is given in the surgical gingivectomy. So there are two types of incisions which are given in gingivectomy. So they are basically surgical gingivectomy is divided into two types that is internal bevel or external bevel. So this is how your external bevel it looks like. External bevel is the bevel which is given. So this is the incision which is given in gingivectomy. So this is the incision of gingivectomy. Whereas this internal bevel incision it is also known as reverse bevel because now you can see this is the external bevel and the internal bevel it is reverse of the gingivectomy incision and hence it is known as reverse and this internal bevel it is also used in flap surgeries. Now you have seen this is the first incision that we give in like every flaps. So this is the internal bevel and this is the external bevel and external bevel it is usually used only in the when there are gingival enlargement and the procedures of crown lengthening because now you can see over here you are removing whole this portion in this external bevel and over here you are removing a smaller portion when you are comparing it with the external bevel and hence external bevel is only used in the enlargement cases and the crown lengthening cases. Then the type of incision in internal bevel incision it may be continuous or discontinuous. So this is continuous and this is discontinuous how you are giving the incisions as. So discontinuous it is from the facial surface at the distal angle. So it is from the facial surface at the distal angle of the last tooth. So you start your incision from the distal angle of the last tooth to the distofacial angle of the next tooth. So this is how it looks. So this is the distofacial angle of the next tooth. Then the next incision it begins in the interdental space to the distofacial angle of the next tooth. So this is like first you start at the distal surface of the last tooth. Then you are like you are proceeding towards the distofacial angle of the next tooth. So over here this is the distofacial angle of the next tooth. The next incision it is started in the interdental portion. So now over here you are seeing this is the interdental portion. So you are starting this incision at interdental portion to the distofacial of the next tooth. So this is how it looks. So you are discontinuous. So the incision it is discontinuous. So you are starting from here you are ending it over here. Then again you are starting from here then you are ending it over here. So this is a discontinuous type of incision. The continuous is it is started on the facial surface from the distoangular region and is carried forward anteriorly. Now you can see this is continuous. You are not breaking it. So it's not like in the discontinuous you are breaking it and then again you are starting it. It is continuous. So hence it is known as continuous. And the distal incision that is facial and lingual incision they are joined by an incision which is across the distal surface of the last erupted root. So basically in this continuous it is continuous. So hence it is named as continuous because the incision it is continuous. And it is moving from the distal surface of the last erupted tooth towards the medial surface. Now, what are the steps? So, first, the steps are start a pipal to the points which are marked of the course of the periodontal pocket and is directed coronally to a point between the base of the pocket and the crest of the bone. So, this is first point that you have marked your pockets. So, now you have marked your pockets, and then you start making an incision which is a pipal to these pockets. Then the next is the incision it should be beveled at approximately 45 degrees to the tooth surface. So when you are making an incision so it should be at 45 degrees to the tooth surface to follow the normal festooned pattern that is the normal your gingival contour. So to, to follow that you are maintaining that 45 degrees tilt. Then it should not leave the diseased pocket wall. The incision it should pass completely through the soft tissue to the tooth. Then first you are using this quick lens knife. Now as I said this quick lens knife is a gingivectomy knife. So you are using a quick lens knife to make the first incision. So to make this first incision you are using a quick lens knife. So you have to remember this very well because this is very commonly asked MCQ which is the knife of gingivectomy and which knife you are using to make the first incision. So that is your quick lens knife. Then the Orban's knife it is used to remove the interproximal gingiva. To free the tissue interproximally you are using this Orban's knife. So this is the next point that you need to remember that Orban's knife it is used 
as a supplemental it is used for the supplemental interdental incisions the, then this is the incision which is given then you're removing the resected gingiva and then you're smoothing whatever the region is so you're removing all the granulation tissue the you're doing the curettage you're smoothing the roots and then you remove all this granulation tissue you remove the calculus and after that what you're doing is you're washing the area several times with the saline and you're covering with the gauze sponge and then lastly you're covering it with a periodontal pack now i'm going to explain like i'm going to show you the pictures for it clinical pictures of it so that you can understand it well so first this is how it looks so this is your so this is the pocket markers so this is how it looks so because of that when you're pressing it oh towards so now you can see this is a pointed so this pocket markers they are pointed so when you're pressing it onto the gingiva there are these bleeding points and hence this is known as the pocket marking you're marking the pockets so this is the pocket marker so first we are anesthetizing the area so this is the local anesthesia so after local anesthesia the selected area so first you're giving the local anesthesia in the selected area and after that the next point is now you're marking this pockets so this is pockets they are explored so first you're exploring the pockets with the periodontal probe like where all the pockets are present and then you're marking it with this periodontal pocket markers and on the facial and the lingual surface so now you can see with this pointed mark so now you have seen the base of the pocket it was present over here so you're marking this point at this point with this pocket marker so now you can see there are these dots the bleeding points which are present so these are the points of your pocket markers the next is now first is you're using a quick lens incision so first you give a quick lens incision so the quick lens incision is the primary incision and you're giving it with the help of this quick lens knife so this is the knife of your gingivectomy so the periodontal knife that is they are used for the incision on the facial and the lingual surfaces and those distal to the terminal tooth in the arch so you are using this on the facial and the lingual surface and the distal to the terminal tooth of the arch so this is a quick lens so now you can see how you're giving the incision so this so this is a external bevel incision now you can see this is external bevel incision and this is done with the help of a quick lens knife and we have seen it can be continuous or discontinuous so over here this is a continuous type of incision that we have given and then you can use this orbins knife so this is a orbins knife which is used for the supplemental interdental incision and we have seen there were this bard parker blades which were used like number 11 and 12 and there were scissors and they are used as a supplemental so they can be used like if it is very difficult to carry out so if the gingiva it is difficult to remove so in that you can use this bard parker blades then the incision it is started a pikel to the point marking the course of the pockets so now you have marked this pocket so now you have marked this pocket so you are starting this incision a pikel to them at the angulation of 45 degree then it should be as close as possible to the bone without exposing the crest of the alveolar bone and this is how it looks so it should be close to the bone but it should not expose the crest of the alveolar bone so you are making this incision a pikel to it at the 45 degree angulation so you can see over here so the angulation of your blade it is at 45 degree to the tip. then next is now you're using this orbins knife to remove the interproximal gingiva interdental gingiva and this is your tissue nippers which is used to remove now you can see you're excising this gingiva so you're excising the gingiva you have made this incision and they're excising the gingiva with this tissue nippers so these are the tissue nippers and then you're removing all the granulation tissue now you can see over here you're removing all this granulation tissue and you're smoothing your roots with the help of q rates and you're doing with all that scaling and everything and you're removing all the granulation tissue and you remove any rem remaining calculus and the necrotic cementum so as to leave a smooth and clean root surface and this is how it looks after the surgery and then you're giving the surgical pack so the surgical site it is cleaned with the normal saline and the bleeding it is controlled then after the bleeding after the bleeding it is controlled the surgical site it is protected using a surgical pack or it is known as periodontal pack then care should be taken to see that the periodontal pack it does not extend too much coronally or apically so this is how it should be like properly and this is after six months so this is post operatively after six months so this is how it looks so the gingiva it was enlarged now it now you can see the gingiva it is normal in this case so this is nothing but a surgical gingivectomy so this is the same picture that you can draw in your exams so first you are measuring the pockets with the help of periodontal pocket then you're marking it with the pocket markers then you are making an incision which is a pikel to it at 45 degree angulation with the quick lens knife 
so this is how it looks like this is a external bevel incision then you are using the orbins knife to remove the interdental gingiva then you are removing the you are excising the gingiva with the tissue nippers then you are cleaning the area so this is the calculus now you can see this is present calculus is present onto the root surfaces which was not exposed earlier but now after removing the gingiva now it is easily visible to us and after that you are removing all this and then you are giving this surgical pack so this is the same picture this is the external bevel incision so now this is the gingiva excised gingiva so now you have removed all this excised gingiva and this is this is how it looks this is after the surgery and after the healing now what is the healing after the gingivectomy so initial response is there is the formation of the protective surface clot then the clot it is replaced by the granulation tissue then approximately after 2 hours there is the increase in the new connected tissue cells then around 12 to 24 hours so after 12 to 24 hours epithelial cells at the margin they start to migrate over the granulation tissue then 24 to 36 hours the epithelial cells they are advanced by the tumbling action with the cells they becoming fixed to the substrate then third day is numerous young fibroblasts so this is how it heals so how your gingiva it heals after doing the gingivectomy so after fix so you can see at the fifth week there is completion of the epithelial repair and at the seventh week that is the 49th day there is completion of the connective tissue repair so this is how it gets repaired now next is the laser gingivectomy so most commonly used lasers are carbon dioxide and nd ag lasers so they are used for excising the gingival overgrowth so this is a laser with the help of laser so with the help of this laser light you are removing the gingiva so over here so this is a laser light and you are removing the gingival overgrowth the advantage is, is it offers almost completely dry bloodless surgery so you are not making an incision or anything because of that it is completely dry and bloodless surgery then because of dry feel surgical time it may be reduced then there is an instant sterilization of the area and because of that there is decreased chances of the bacteremia then there is a prompt healing with the minimal post operative swelling and scarring so now you have seen in surgical removal they heal by the secondary intention but in this laser surgery post operative swelling and scarring is less then post operative pain it may appear to be greatly reduced so pain it is reduced in this laser gingivectomy now the disadvantages is it is of a high cost now you are using this lasers so it is high cost and then it is important that all operating room personnel they have to wear the glasses for the protection because this is a laser which is used this is a disadvantage for the laser gingivectomy so with the help of laser you are removing the gingiva the next is the electrosurgical gingivectomy now this electrosurgical gingivectomy what you are doing is you are using the division so basically electrosurgery it is a division of the tissue by high frequency electrical current which is applied locally with the help of this metal instrument so you are using this like whole setup so this is the electro surgery where you have this metal instrument so you are placing this metal instrument and over here high frequency electrical current it is generated from this machine and with the help of that it is the gingiva it is removed so your high frequency current of like around 1.5 to 7.5 million cycles per second is used to perform the gingivectomy so this is the instrument which is used for surgical electrosurgical gingivectomy with the help with the help of electrical current and this metal sheet so this is the metal metal instrument so with the help of this you are removing the gingiva now what are the advantages so there is control of hemorrhage and there is adequate contouring of the tissue so you can easily contour the tissue the disadvantage it cannot be used in patient who have cardiac pacemaker so the patient who have cardiac pacemaker you cannot use this in those patient because now this is a electrical you are generating electricity electrical current into this so you cannot use this in cardiac pacemaker then the treatment it causes unpleasant odor if the electro surgery point it touches the bone it can cause irreparable bone damage and if this like if now you can see over here we are using electrical current and if this touches the bone then there is irreparable damage to the bone the heat which is generated by the injury is used it can cause tissue damage and the loss of the periodontal support when the electrode it is used close to the bone then when the electrode it touches the roots areas of cementum burn and they are usually produced which is known as cementum necrosis so the cementum it can get necrosed now the indications for this electrosurgical are it is removal of the gingival enlargement gingivoplasty then relocation of the frenum and the muscle attachment then there is incision of the periodontal and the pericoronal abscess so this is how the electrosurgical gingivectomy it works as 
so the, for gingival for gingivoplasty so the needle electrodes and the diamond shaped electrode so there are various shapes of this electrode so they can be like in the loop they are this type of needle or they are this needle or this uh, diamond shaped electrodes so they are used for festooning now for gingivoplasty for gingivoplasty when you are recontouring the gingiva so this diamond shaped electrodes they are used then in all reshaping procedure electrodes they are activated and they are moved in a concise shaving motion so like how you do a how you do shaving so in that motion only you are using this electrode so you are moving this metal sheath or this instrument in the shaving motion so like this you are moving this in a shaving motion as of you are doing the shaving of it so they are activated and they are moved in a shaving motion now for the abscess drainage incision can be made with the needle electrode now for the abscesses we are using this needle electrode then for hemostasis ball electrode is used this is a ball or a circular one or a loop one so for hemostasis you can use this ball one and for the relocation of the frenum you are using this loop electrode is used so this is like which electrode is used in which cases for gingivoplasty you are using this diamond one then for the abscess drainage you are using this needle one then for the hemostasis and for the frenum and the muscle attachment you are using a loop or a ball shaped electrode then how is the healing after the electrosurgical gingivectomy there is delayed healing then there are greater reduction in the gingival height so it can be greatly reduced as the electric current is very high so if it is not done if it is not done properly so there can be greater reduction then there can is there can be bone injury now you have seen in the disadvantage so if the point electrosurgical point it touches the bone there is bone injury there can be necrosis of the cementum then there is sequestration and the loss of the bone height sequestration is nothing but a segment of the necrosed bone so there is formation of the sequestration then there can be focation exposure tooth mobility and because of that the healing it is not as favorable as that in the surgical gingivectomy now gingivectomy by the chemo surgery so the chemo surgery is using chemical so the chemicals which are used are 5% para formaldehyde or the potassium hydroxide to remove the gingiva the disadvantage for this is their depth of action cannot be controlled hence it may not it may also injure the normal tissues then the gingival remodeling is not possible and the healing is delayed and hence because of that chemo surgery is not usually done nowadays now gingivoplasty now gingivoplasty it was a term which was given by goldman so it is nothing but the reshaping of the gingiva to create a physiologic contour in the absence of the pocket now if the pockets they are absent and you are just creating the physiologic contours of the gingiva so you are just reshaping it to get that proper contour then indication is to correct the grossly thickened gingival margin then correction of the deformity like craters cleft then gingival enlargement so this is the indication for gingivoplasty but there are no pockets the instruments are the periodontal knife scalpel then the rotary cross the diamond you are using a diamond electrodes so that you are reshaping it procedure is you are tapering the gingival margin you are creating a scalloped margin so you are creating a scalloped margin outline which is thinning the attached gingiva then you are shaping the interdental papilla to produce or to uh, to provide a embrasure for the passage of foot scraping or the shaving of the surface so what you are doing is you are just creating this scallop margin and then what you are doing then you are shaping the interdental papilla and after that you are just doing this scraping or the shaving of the surface with the help of this rotary coarse diamond electrode so this is nothing but gingivoplasty we are just you are just recontouring it or you are just reshaping the gingiva and the last part is the difference between gingivectomy and gingivoplasty so gingivectomy is the excision of the soft tissue wall of the periodontal pocket so you are removing that gingiva excision of the gingiva is the gingivectomy gingivoplasty is nothing but a recontouring of the gingiva to get that physiologic form of the gingiva so the objective is to eliminate the pocket over here gingivoplasty the objective is to obtain a physiologic form though now you can see in gingivoplasty there are no pockets which are present and in gingivectomy it is done only when the pockets are present it can be pseudo pockets or true pockets so it can lead to the loss of attachment in the form of recession now you are removing the gingiva because of that there is loss of attachment and it can lead to recession and over here you are just recontouring it and hence there is no loss of attachment you are not removing the gingiva you are just recontouring it you are just repositioning the gingiva in a proper position to get that proper physiologic form of the gingiva so this is nothing but gingivoplasty and this is gingivectomy where you are excising the gingiva and this was all about gingivectomy and gingivoplasty thank you so much